Good afternoon, Floss Tube, and welcome to our homestead. My name is Lynette at Homesteading on the Homefront. This is Floss Tube episode number 35. It is Thursday, nope, Saturday. It's Saturday, December 29th, 2018. And I wanted to um, come back and give you an update and talk about 2019 plans and all that good stuff. Um, this video could be a hot mess because as little one mentioned in her last video, we have not yet unpacked the mirror that we usually place behind our camera so that we can see um, what you're seeing. So I'm just going to play it by ear and, and hope that all goes well in my attempt to film. Um, as you can see, I am in the new house and I will tell you the story about that at the end of the video because I know some of you are only here for the stitching. Um, but there is definitely a story behind our, our new home and so I wanted to share that with you. Um, but I'll get right into, into things so that um, I can fit everything in in my half hour before the camera shuts off. So, first of all, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, I got lots of Christmas cards from you all, and that was wonderful. Um, my love language is Christmas cards, recipes, and seeds. So, <laughs> the fact that I got so many Christmas cards from you all um, was wonderful. It, it, um, it really emphasized to me how important and wonderful this community is and, and what a blessing it is to be a part of it. Um, the first piece of mail that we got in our new home <clears throat> was a Christmas card from Melanie with one of her tags, so I wanted to show that to you. So that was really special. It was actually, the envelope was waiting for us on the counter um, when we came in to do the walkthrough before we closed on it. So um, it, it felt like home because we had mail waiting for us. So thank you, Melanie. If you um, haven't checked her out at Yarns and Threads, please go do that. Um, she is a wealth of information and I love her videos. Okay, so I have some finishes to show you. Um, I have been stitching even though I um, have been a little crazy. Um, life has been nuts here. I'll get into that more later on. But the first finish that I want to show you is Hello Winter. And as you can see, um, I chose to leave off the Hello Winter. I don't know how I'm going to finish this, um, but I knew I wanted to leave it out all winter long. And so it felt silly to me to be saying Hello Winter um, at the end of February. So this is it. I used, um, I don't know if you can see, I used many of the colors from Tis the Season so that it will um, look good if I choose to display them together. Um, but I love how this came out. <clears throat> and I just ordered Hello Summer today from 123 Stitch. So um, that might be rearing its head sometime soon as well. And then um, I made a couple of these. This pattern is from Country Cottage the Christmas cookies. And I had started on these while I was um, subbing at my first school. And I got a couple of them done. As you can see, I didn't stitch the cookies. Um, they look, just looked like brown blobs to me. So I found some gingerbread buttons instead and added those. So I don't know how I'm going to finish these, um, if they're going to be ornaments or what. They were intended to be gifts for my friends who host cookie swaps. Um, but those cookie swaps have come and gone and the ornaments are not finished. So um, the new plan is to give them next year. <laughs> and hopefully between now and then I can find the time to finish those. Um... So that's it as far as whips go. Um, I know, as far as finishes go. I do have several whips that I'm working on. The first... <clears throat> the first wasn't supposed to be here. This is my Newport project. But um, Hubby got very excited to clear out stuff there that we had been storing. And so he just emptied the closet and brought everything here. 
And so he's going to have to take this back with him because, like I said, it's my Newport project. I can't work on it here. But um, I wanted to show it to you anyway because I am loving how it's coming along. Um, old, old Nantucket, is that what it's called? Yes, Old Nantucket by Little House. <clears throat> and so basically I need to build a ship and finish some words, which I'm changing up. And that'll be a done project. Um, but like he said, it, it's going to be a while before we get back to Newport because there's work that needs to be done here. It's going to be gardening season soon. So um, it might be... It might be summer before we're in Newport again, um, but that's okay. And then this one you haven't seen in a long time. This is His Eyes on the Sparrow, which I am working on with um, my group of friends. I <clears throat> am actually on the th third or fourth page, I forget. Basically, I did um, all of this side. Let me see if you can see this. I did all that side and then I came up again and so I'm starting up here. So um, the house is going to be here and so basically this is the center of the piece. So I still love it. I love working on it. Um, I got some stitches in before Christmas and then um, Christmas happened and I wanted to hop on the um, Prairie Schooler train with Helen D and Misty and now I didn't have the project that they're working on <clears throat> but it's prairie schooler year right Helen so I decided to take this one out can you see the price tag on there yep a dollar I found this one at um, Bush Mountain Stitchery at their grand opening and I loved it for a couple of reasons. Um, number one is that it's the 1991 Santa and 91 was a great year because that's when I graduated from high school. Um, we had a great class. I loved, I loved high school um, so much so that I'm back there teaching for another couple of weeks until um, the regular teacher is back from maternity leave. So it's been fun to be back at my alma mater. Um, but <clears throat> this also reminded me a lot of Williamsburg because it's got the pineapples and I don't know if these are supposed to be apples or what, but, um, it just, I really liked it. And so I decided to start this one a couple days ago because I knew I could probably finish it before the new year. So kind of creepy because Santa does not have a face right now, <laughs> but this is where we're at. Um, and like I said, I do intend to finish him hopefully by tomorrow because we're almost there. I'm not going to put in the, the border because I just, I don't know. It's a simple Santa. I don't think it needs that, that, um, border. So he will probably be my last finish of 2009 or 2018 and that's okay. <clears throat> so I think, yes, I think those are my, my three whips. Um, Nantucket or Newport, will definitely be carried over. I'm in no rush to finish that one. Um, Sparrow will be carried over. I knew that one when I started. Um, and Prairie Schooler Santa will be finished. So that means I go into 2019 with two whips, which is, I think, exactly what I went into 2018 with. So um, that's good. I, I don't like to have more than three. It stresses me out. Um, so hopefully... Um, I do have some starts planned and I hope I don't get stressed out about it. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, I did want to show you some old finishes. There were some pieces that I couldn't wait to unpack that um, have been in storage for three and a half years while we were in Guam. And we um, uncovered two out of the three so far. So there's still one missing, but there's a lot of boxes in that basement that need to be unpacked. So we'll get there. Um, the first one, <clears throat> I don't know if you're going to be able to see the whole thing. This is, I, I don't know anything about it. Um, I want to say it was a Janlin kit, maybe Dimensions, I don't know. Um, it was stitched in 1994. Um, and there's no glass on it because that got broken in a move at some point, 
but I have loved these Santas. I loved stitching on them. Um, oh, look, I even dated. Wow, I impressed myself. Can you see that? October 1994 to December 1994. So that was actually, that was pretty impressive. That was before husband and kids. That was even before I was teaching. Wait a minute, I was still in college. Yeah, this was my last semester of college because I got out in December of 94. <laughs> so um, this is how I spent my last semester of college. I loved this project. And I can't um, wait to, I'm gonna find some glass because I wanna get it behind glass, it's getting dirty. Um, it is DMC, so I know that I can wash it, but there's there's some of that gold in here too, and I don't know how that will wash up. So I might just take a Q-tip to the dirty spots and see how that goes, but um, this is one of my all-time favorites. And then the other project that I found is this one. I don't know if this is a lavender and lace or a butternut road. Um, basically the story behind this one is that my husband's grandmother started stitching it, um, <clears throat> in 1997, and I believe that was the year that she had her stroke, and so she was in the middle of this project and then had her stroke and couldn't stitch anymore, and so when I met them and was out in Ohio visiting with them, I was going through her stitching stuff and found this, and um, I finished it for her while I was out visiting. Um, so you can see down here in the corner, my initials in 02 and her initials in 97. And so um, she was in a nursing home, and one of the nurses or aides um, who worked there saw the unfinished project and offered to finish it for her. And so the aide at the nursing home turned it into this lovely pillow with the cording and um, it's backed in velvet or velveteen. Um, so if you are a, or were a nursing home employee in Kent, Ohio, um, back in the early eight, uh, 90s, no, back in the early 2000s, then um, I would like to thank you if you were the person who finished this for her because um, after grandma passed away, um, it came to live with us. And so this is definitely one of those cherished family objects that um, I'm happy survives storage. <clears throat> okay, so now I guess we're on to our 2019 plans. I have lots of projects in this bin that I'm just going to take out and talk to you about. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to them. One of them is missing, and that is the um, it's the Blackbird Designs. I think it's called Sweet Land of Liberty. And I don't know if I took the booklet with me from Guam or if it's still in the boxes from Guam but I haven't uncovered it yet, but that is definitely something that I wanna be working on this summer. So um, I won't be showing that to you because I haven't found it yet. So we're just gonna go. <clears throat> first things first, heartstring sampler never let you go. I think this is gonna be my new year, new start. Um, it is not easy saying goodbye to my husband on the week on the Sundays when he goes back to Newport. Um, I put him on a plane to Afghanistan for a year. And this is not supposed to be that difficult, but it just never gets easier. And so one Sunday while I was saying goodbye to him, the verse from the sampler popped into my head. And um, I knew that that was a sign that I needed to do the sampler. And for those of you who don't know, the verse says, I wish I was a little seed. I'd grow and grow and grow. I'd twine myself around your heart and never let you go. So um, I'm going to be working on this one. I'm going to be changing things <clears throat> because as many of you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I like symmetrical things. <laughs> this is not symmetrical. And also I just stitched that cow in um, Sparrow. And I don't want to stitch him again. 
So I'm going to be making some changes to this um, and making it fit into a standard size frame. But um, assuming I can get my act together and kit it up between now and then, that's going to be my new year, new start. And then <clears throat> we have Plum Street Samplers Blue Skin, which I want to do for um, a small for my dough bowl. I am probably going to change things. I might leave out George Washington in the tree, so it might just be the horse with the flag. Haven't decided yet, um, but that's definitely on my list. Um, Heartstring Sampler, another one from Beth. This is Forever Young. Um, I saw Lori doing this one and I love the colors and so I decided that I'm going to work on this one. I don't know when, but we'll see. And then the phone's ringing. We haven't hooked our answering machine up, so I don't know how long it'll go. This one is Quarry Batacori. Bata, Bata I don't know how you say it. Um, I just loved this one, and I couldn't decide. There's a brunette and a blonde. And so I can't decide if these are my two daughters or if this is my best friend and I. So I don't know. I might have to stitch this one twice. But um, the blonde and the brunette got to me, and so I'm going to be definitely stitching that one. Um, home for the Holidays. Many of you know that we did the Tis the Season Sal. Um, there's lots of people in the group. There's lots of people still stitching it. But sometime next fall, um, I am going to change the name of the group from Tis the Season Sal to Home for the Holidays Sal so that we can work on whatever project from this book we want to work on. So um, that's the plan for that one. This one, again, um, Lori, Mischievous Stitcher, was stitching on it and I tried to resist, and I did resist. And then I saw um, Carol Sawbuck Stitcher, it was hanging on her wall, and I couldn't resist anymore. So Pink Sparrow is on the list for 2019. And then this one, couldn't resist it either. Blackbird Designs, Merrily, We Welcome Spring. Um, again, I'm going to tweak this one a little because the original sampler, I don't know if you can see this, but the original sampler was way more symmetrical. Um, so I think I'm going to probably bring this back to what the original looked like because... Um, that offset house, it bothers me. <laughs> All right, and then Year of Prairie Schooler, right? So I decided I need to work on this one. This is Kitchen Table. I'm going to be working on these separately so that I can fill a dole bolt with those. And then Holiday Harvest. Um, this is totally Yvonne's fault because she stitched... Um, I forget which one she stitched, but it was beautiful and it's hard to find. Um, so I settled on this one. I thought this would be great for a winter dough bowl. And then we have another Plum Street. This is Heritage Sampler. You've all seen it. I'm going to do something a little bit different with this one. I'm only going to be stitching the outside border. And then um, the plan is to um, personalize the, the wording down here as a um, tribute to my husband on his retirement from the Navy, which um, will be happening in 2020. So I have some time for that one, but not a ton of time. So I want to get started on it. Um, this one... I have loved and I'm going to get to finally this is Ann Pegg from Tanya Brockmeyer at Scarlet House and I just love it I love the verse um, it's nice and symmetrical so I don't have to change anything about it um, that one should be a pretty quick and easy stitch um, 
This one was actually on my 2018 list and I didn't get to it, but it's a quick and easy one. It is um, Better to Dwell by My Big Toe. And what I loved about this was not necessarily the verse. I just love the look and the colors. So I think what I'm going to be doing with this one um, is changing the verse to um, she is clothed in strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. So I think um, I'm going to change that if I can if I can chart it and fit it all in. But this is mostly words, so that is not going to take long at all. What else do we have here? Uh, this one I wanted to get to this fall, but I was not, I just couldn't make myself stitch fall this year because I knew that we were not going to be in a house quick enough to display fall stuff. Um, but Autumn's Fruitful Labor by With Thy Needle and Thread, um, this will definitely be getting done. And again, I'm gonna tweak this one a little to make it fit into a standard size frame. But that'll be a fall project. And then we have more of the Farmhouse Christmas series that I have not finished. I'm not doing them all. I just, I think it's this, um, this barn and then the quilt that came with it that I need to do. And then I need to actually stitch the quilts that I designed to go with that because I have not stitched all of those yet. Um, and we have another Plum Street. Of course, I have to do hen pack. So that'll probably be a spring stitch. I usually, I don't decorate much for spring. Um, I'll go straight from winter to like bees and chickens. So that will probably get done at that point. Um, I may or may not get to this one. This is um, Peril on the Sea, which is um, a verse from Eternal Father, the Navy Hymn. But I saw this one and I really liked it. I, I don't like the ship so much, so I may just end up doing that part, but we'll see. And then what else do we have? The last <clears throat> big project that I wanna do um, is a scenic farm. You've seen it. I. I love it. Julie McConnell's husband did it first, um, and that's where I first loved it. And then Farm Girl did it, and she showed her finish, and I loved it. And then um, Joan and Kelly, um, this is hanging in Kelly's house, and you could see it in the backdrop on some of their videos, and I just, I had to bite the bullet, and, and I bought it. I got a good deal on eBay. It was like, I don't know, $30 including shipping for the kit and everything. Um, but I was going to resist it. I was not going to start it until Sparrow was done. But then Country Stitchers showed it and they're going to be starting it. And how can I let them stitch it and I not stitch it? So I think what's going to happen with this one is this is going to be my snow day project. Um, and we haven't had any snow days yet. I'm free really hoping for some snow days um, because <clears throat> the kids will have to make them up in June but I will not have to make them up because my last day is Thursday January 25th or 24th um, and that's it so I'm hoping for some snow days and I would love to get to work on that one um, oh I had another finish forgot to show you about this one so <clears throat> this is a Bitsy Bob that um, Kelly had sent to one of the girls and I reclaimed it because it's the perfect size project bag for little projects like this one. This is a um, Lizzie Kate. I need to add the buttons to it. Did I show you that in my last video? I don't know if I had started it yet. But um, everything fits here. <laughs> like it's the perfect size project bag. It, it goes in my um, purse or my center console and I love it. So thank you, Kelly. And here's another one. And I think I showed you these. I don't know if I was done with these last time or not, but these were um, the snowmen from 
let's see, heart and hand. And I had changed him so that he's actually a white snowman instead of wearing a jacket. So these will get finished at some point. I don't know when. So is that it? Yeah, that's it for my um, my 2019 plans. Um, I did want to say thank you to Donna Ray because she sent me some Huga goodies. And so as soon as we get some snow and I can snuggle in with a blanket, um, I'm going to be <coughs> hooging myself out. Is that, a, is that even a word? I don't know. Anyway, so thank you, Donna Ray. Much appreciated. Um, okay, so that's my plans. So done with the stitching talk for now. Um, I'm going to tell you the story about our house before the camera shuts off. Um, so basically, in June, I heard that this property would be coming on the market. And um, I, I was anxious for it to come on the market because <clears throat> I knew it was the perfect house for us. Um, a little history on the, the property itself. Um, there's this house, there's a house next door, and then there's like three house lots that way. One of them has a larger farmhouse on it. Um, and so back in the late 1920s, my grandfather purchased the whole property. He built the house next door. Um, that was their first house. They had a couple kids by that point, um, and then they outgrew it. So then they built the larger farmhouse um, that's two houses up the road, and then they outgrew that, and they moved to the property um, where they <clears throat> they had a large farmhouse. When they retired, they sold it, but they kept um, 30 acres of the original property, and they built their retirement home. So in the meantime, this um, house lot was vacant. And so in 1966, when my uncle Guy was getting married, um, he and my grandfather and my two uncles who were carpenters built this house. Um, and that's where my uncle Guy and my Aunt Mary Ann spent 40 years together. Um, I have lots of fond memories playing Barbies here with my cousin Angela. And... Um, in 2000, Uncle Guy died in 2003, I think, 2002, three, four-ish. Um, and Aunt Marianne held on to the property for as long as she could, but it's almost two acres of open land. It, it's a big house, um, and so she downsized and sold the property in 2008. And so it had been out of the family for 10 years, and um, the people who bought it had taken a, a job in the western part of the state. And so because, um, because I've been doing genealogy for 30 years, I'm really good at finding information if, whether or not it's readily available. Um, I just, I enjoy the hunt. So, um, to make a long story short, I was able to find the name of these people's realtor or real estate agent. And I talked to my agent and it come to find out he knew their agent. He knew their agent very well. And so we were able to, well, I shouldn't even say we, I was able to see the house the night before they were going to list it on the market. And... I knew I couldn't let it be listed because there's no other there's no other houses on the market like this in this town. Um, the school system here is great. It's it's a town that's very much in demand, and so um, houses are expensive. And a lot of the houses are big colonials that I didn't want to clean and I didn't want to heat. Um, so to make a long story short, we basically um, put in a full price offer to keep it from going on the market and it never made it on the market because they accepted. Um, they had already purchased the house and were moving and they were kind of desperate to sell too. Um, so it just worked out really well. Um, God's hand was all over this deal for us and for them as well. Um, and at closing, 
their lawyer and our lawyer commented what a smooth deal this was and, and how, um, how polite <laughs> both parties were. Um, and it, it was a, a very smooth transaction. So we 